make sculptures, when I make objects, I'm still recontextualising them, I think, in terms of painting, in terms of literature, in terms of architecture. I'm using these other structures to kind of describe the work and navigate my way through making the work. And I mentioned the physical romanticism of an object, painterly gesture and mark making and colour and particularly painterly reference comes into the work, kind of seeps into the work and finds its way onto the metal, offers another kind of a, a sort of gap into another world, another layer of reference that I'm able to kind of then input onto the sculpture that you wouldn't otherwise get in a very kind of minimal language of linear sculpture. If you look at Sarah's work, a lot of the the themes and aspects that she explores are quite architectural. It's all about materiality and how that works. You know, it's quite a, quite a strong sort of hierarchy between how she uses glass and metalwork. There's the idea of how you perceive certain materials, things that you perhaps wouldn't traditionally expect to be floating and very light do, whereas things that are traditionally seen as a much lighter material tend to be the more structural and supporting element. I suppose I have a tendency for a kind of a lightness in the way that I use material, but often I'm, I'm using a material that is otherwise perceived as quite architectural. So for the Baltic work, there'll be two quite kind of core clusters of glass that are bridged with this metal framework that then goes right up into the ceiling. The first thing I wanted to do was use the full height of the space. And it's because it's a collaborative work um, with Ryder Architects, it felt like this is the moment to do that, exceed my own notions for the work and make something that felt like it was on an architectural scale that you could move through, that you could participate in, that already felt like something new, a new area um, f for us to work in. I've really kind of tried to extend those rods and lengths as far as they'll go and it's kind of quite un unpredictable how they'll behave and I think they will bow in the space and kind of sag and droop under these kind of unyielding quite big shapes that are quite top heavy. Although it's quite a, f a free form installation in some ways there's still a very strong sense of order within it you know as a way how it meets the ground has been well considered there's a sense of direction and motion about it you know these are all things that you know they're quite architecturally expressive ideas. This idea of being able to step into another world by kind of crossing this sort of threshold which we referred to in the title of the work. So it's called A Subtle Knife, which was from Philip Pullman's trilogy. And so you have this idea of the glass plane slicing through, not just objects within the gallery, but potentially going beyond. And it's just, this just happens to be the point where they meet. Even as part of the working process, we would look at preparing sort of visuals and concept ideas that kind of express these themes. And Sarah would then work through maquettes and work these things up. I think at some point in the process, I feel like I have to have that kind of ownership of it. But it's less possible working on such a big scale. I think that kind of playfulness and that experimentation has to come at different points in the process. So the way I've dealt with it really is that I can kind of negotiate different things, work on a really small scale in the maquette making as much as I want and try to allow that kind of witnessing and emerging of association and reference that I rely on in my normal sculptural practice to come in. And then I have to let go of that to some extent when it goes into somebody else's hands to make the larger scale parts. And I've been able to do that to working with Scott Associates who are very kind of sensitive to every mark and every bow of a piece of metal. Um, all of these small details, you know, they understand that that's to do with the kind of materiality of the sculpture and that the material and meaning are very much intertwined so that I can't really let go of any of those elements. And I suppose I kind of try and regain that part of my own kind of action and connection to the work so I sort of collage with these coloured, pre-made, painted parts of aluminium, sheet aluminium, that then are positioned onto the final sculptural framework and bring it back, I suppose, to a language that I feel like is mine, my kind of vocabulary. The whole 
ethos of the work is just this change in perception. As you walk around it, you look at it from different aspects. From the back of the gallery looking out, you see forms silhouetted against the light as opposed to having light shine on them. Because it's not a directly figurative piece of art, it's all about how you perceive it and the different ways of perceiving it that make it interesting and, and keep it fresh. Above anything, I think I just want from sculpture, the, the materiality of the thing in the room is powerful enough and sort of overwhelming enough and that it's imbalanced, kind of improbability, all the weight up there, just it feels very present and in that sense you just respond to it. I think that's you know, all you really can kind of hope for.